By default, there are numerous events you can respond to in a JavaScript application. JavaScript also lets you create custom events. This provides a useful pattern for large projects. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. JavaScript custom events are handled in the same way as regular events. However, in order to use a custom event, you must first create the event and also emit or send that event. So what is the value of using custom events? Well, let me first show how to set up a custom event and then we'll talk about a use case. So first, to set up a custom event, you need to create a new custom event. Custom event is a constructor in JavaScript that allows us to create a new event. So let's go ahead and create one called login event. We'll assign it to the variable login event. And we set that equal to new. We have to use the new keyword because this is a constructor custom event. And then we can pass in two pieces of data here. One is the text string that identifies the event. So let's just call this login. This is the same text string that will be used to add an event listener to subscribe to this event so that you can respond to it when it's fired. And then the second piece of data is an object. And this object allows us to provide some information. So we can do something like this. Detail. And then let's say this is the first time this person is logged in. We'll set that to true. So that provides some information that can be retrieved from the event object. Therefore, when we subscribe to that event, if we need additional information about it, we can get that information as long as it was provided when we created the custom event. Now, in order for this event to fire, we must emit the event. So this is how you would do that. We use dispatch event, and then the event we want to dispatch is this one here. This causes the event to emit and anything that is subscribed using at event listener can respond to this event. Now something important about emitting the event is you need to include a DOM element. In this case it makes sense to use document since we're using a login event, that would be for the entire document. But there may be situations where it makes sense to use some other DOM element. So we've created the event and we've emitted the event. Now, in order to respond to the event, we need to set up an event listener. Now, let me just save this file. And then I'm going to go to a different JavaScript file that's attached to this HTML page. And that's where I'm going to add the event listener. And that way I'm able to respond to that event as needed. So this part is the same as if we were setting up an event listener for a regular event. Use add event listener. And then we specify the event. That is the text string which we use to define it right here, login. And then we designate the function that will be invoked when this event happens. Now I'm just going to enter an anonymous function. That is usually how I do event listeners. You could define a separate function and just put the function name in there. That works as well. And then I'm just going to put a couple of console log statements. User has logged in. And then I want to look at the event object just so you can see what is returned as a part of that event object that we capture right here by setting up a variable inside the function that will automatically capture the event object just like with regular events. All right, let me go ahead and save that. 
and let's open the console and we see that we have user has logged in and here's the event so the event was set up the event was emitted and then we responded to the event using the event listener and here's what we can see about the custom event it has a lot of the same attributes as a regular event the one thing that is different is right here detail so we put in first time equals true we have access to that so that is a way to pass information when we're using a custom event so that's how you set it up now as I mentioned this can be a valuable pattern and let me give a possible application then we'll do a quick bit of code to take a look at that let's say you are coding an online course and when someone completes the course there are a lot of things that need to be done well you can put all of that code into one large function that sits in a single JS file or you could turn the course completion into an event and use listeners in any part of the application to respond to that event so for example let me remove this code here and I'm going to copy in a function let's say that this is the function that is called whenever the course is completed and when the course is completed we pass in some information the user the score how long they've been in the course well this function could contain a lot of code that handles everything that needs to be taken care of when the course is completed you can imagine that would be quite large it would be in a single file by turning this into an event and then responding to that event in this file or other files it allows us to break things up it allows us to make it asynchronous and by breaking things up other developers could be working on parts of this so it's kind of a handy little pattern so what I've done in this function is set up the event now notice I've added a couple of additional things to this event these are properties about an event bubbles or cancelable and I've set bubbles to true cancelable to false and then I also have detail this allows me to pass information around to those listeners that will subscribe to this event and I can provide the user the score and the latency so that they can do whatever they need to do with that data and then I dispatch the event using the DOM element document so let me save that now in other parts of the application we can set up event listeners to respond to that event now notice what the string is for defining that is complete course uppercase C there so over here we're going to respond to that and this first event listener is simply going to be we access the user off of the detail object so there's one event listener and as I mentioned there could be multiple event listeners so let's go ahead and add another one document dot add event listener and once again we're going to use the same event string anonymous function we want to include a parameter to capture the event object and then we'll just log something to the console this time we'll do the score the score was E dot detail dot score so you can see how we can access that information that is passed via the event object all right let's go ahead and save that and take a look at this so I'm going to open the console and then I'll go ahead and refresh this page now so far the complete course function has not been called but once that's called we should 
respond to it using those event listeners. So let's go ahead and call that oh, course complete is the correct function. And I'm passing in a name for the user, a score, and the amount of time they've been in the course. So the latency. When I press return, those two event listeners respond to it. Steven finished the course, the score was 90. So we can see how we could put event listeners in different places that respond to that complete course event. And that can be a nice little pattern to use in situations like this. Now before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. You can follow a link in the description to do so. If you want to dive deeply into JavaScript, I provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you can hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can also click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and other resources. Thanks for watching.